What's up, y'all? It's Vern here, the resident Gambia film critic, here with a sideshow, Two Movies, One Plot, where I'm going to discuss two movies that came out around the same time that have similar plot elements or stories. This episode, we're going to be talking about the faculty and disturbing behavior. All right, fair warning, I'm going to be discussing these films in depth, so spoiler alert. Pause, watch the movies if you care, come back, see how I feel about it. <laughs> Uh, the first movie we're going to discuss is The Stern Behavior. It was released in 1998. The tagline could be The Stepford Wives for Teenagers. It was released January 24th, 1998. It had a budget of $15 million and only made $17.5 million at the domestic box office. The Stern Behavior is a retelling of The Stepford Wives. And it's not just a you know basic comparison. It's very much similar to the original 70s movie. And where a young man and his family moves to a, uh, a new town in Washington State on an island. And the school has this little clique that's the Blue Ribbons. And they're jocks, they're athletes, they're cheerleaders, they're very popular, they're very white. And the outsiders are very outside. Uh, two of the main people is Katie Holmes, who's fresh off her first season of Dawson's Creek, and Nick Stahl, who was the forget forgotten John Connor from Terminator 3. Uh, the main character is James Marston, yes, the guy who was Cyclops before he was murdered. And what he slowly discovers is that these children aren't exactly all they're cracked up to be. They start having really weird conniptions during class. And what it is is that a doctor, played by Bruce Greenwood, who is the president and everything, he is lobotomizing these kids as part of some weird government experiment or whatever else. It's pretty much a very counterculture of the outside kids and no one believing the children versus conformity. I liked the premise when I was in high school, but as an older adult, I feel it's very derivative and it could have gone better places, especially if it was done maybe not on an island. If it was, this was already happened and not the test subjects, it would have been better if this was already a success and now someone's finding out how deep this was, much like the Stafford Wives. Uh, uh, when I didn't have any experiences with this particularly because I went to an all boys school I understood how it felt to be an outsider and everyone telling you that by not conforming you're the weirdo when conforming Especially for these type of things Was the weird thing to do to dress the same talk the same do the same things um, It it could have been a lot better especially since it really went very limited on the gore I don't know if it was because they're scared of killing teenagers or anybody in particular or was more suspenseful, but if they went for a hard R and remade this, they could do something with it. So the next movie I'm going to discuss is The Faculty. It was released December 25th, 1998. Same budget of $15 million, but this one made $40 million at the domestic box office. This one is the alien body snatchers pod people type overall motif with a really interesting twist. And the big twist is it takes the breakfast club tropes of the jock, the nerd, and so on, and spins it around. And so far that these kids who get stuck together and kind of learn about this plot overall, the jock actually wants to study more in school and wants to quit the football team. And he, when he actually starts liking the nerdy girl it's because she actually has a personality that's really interesting and she has a reason for being nerdy. The outsider, the outcast, a young Josh Hartnett, who's also the town drug dealer, is actually very smart. He has actually a little weird Dawson's Creek flirting with his teacher vibe. And his actual drug that he makes actually helps save the world. Very interesting. The, one of the main stars is Elijah Wood, who is perennially a tiny man. He's the school newspaper the nerd. And he actually somehow ends up, spoiler alert, with Dominic Torino's sister, uh, jo Jordana Brewster, who looks almost the exact same as she does almost four years later in 2001's Fast and Furious. The, uh, the reason that I like this movie a lot more is the way they play with the tropes of, you know, who's popular, why they're not popular, why people, why teenagers do what they do. You know, it's not just, I want to be a bad boy, it's that my parents don't love me and I need to make money on the side. It has an amazing supporting cast with uh, Robert Patrick, the Terminator, T T-1000 as the gym coach, or maybe football coach, please remind me here. Uh, John Stewart, Selma Hayek as other teachers, and Usher in one of his first film debuts. This one's also very interesting because the aliens really do take over for a while and then 
because of, there's always a queen, they revert back and no one remembers. Uh, between the two films, I find it very interesting that one was released in the summer, which is I think why it didn't make a lot of money. The other one came out at Christmas time, so kids had time to see the trailer and talk about it versus middle of summer, you just go see a movie and who's gonna wanna see a movie about school in the summertime? This has been the first episode of Two Movies, One Plot. Please like, subscribe, and comment below, especially if you know two movies that are very similar and you'd like me to watch, discuss, break down. It's been Vern for the Game Bia. Talk to you later. Hey folks, if you enjoyed that video, you'll probably like our other stuff. So make sure to go check that out on our channel. And while you're there, please make sure to subscribe so you can see what we have cooking up for you. Won't you come join our Gambia? You'll be glad you did.